Apple's new iPad Pro is more beautiful, more powerful, and more useful. But can it replace your Mac as your daily driver? And is this the iPad for you? Hi, I'm Michael Josh, you're watching Gadget Match, and this is our 2018 iPad Pro review. Right, this is the new iPad Pro, the biggest update to the iPad in as long as I can remember. It sports an all new design, headlined by this new display that is closer to the edges of the device than ever before. It's still not exactly edge to edge, there's still enough space for you to grip the device like this without getting in the way of the display. Each trim is equal in size, each inside corner so meticulously curved. Its sides are now flat, more slate-like, reminiscent of the unibody MacBook Pro. The display too is gorgeous, colors pop, animations are buttery smooth, which is exactly what you'd expect from a device meant primarily for folks who like to play games, watch videos, and edit photos or create art. The iPad Pro is available in two sizes. This here is the 12.9 inch model, a bit larger than I'm used to, but definitely the one to get, especially if you're an artist. To achieve this new symmetrical design, Apple's removed the home button from the iPad. In its place is the same true depth system, which Apple uses for face unlock. And because there are still bezels around the display, all of that is hidden somewhere around here. Apple says it's the same system, but I was told that the algorithms have been adjusted, so much so that Face ID works even better on this iPad. One of these improvements is orientation. You can unlock any which way, regardless of how you're holding the device. Which reminds me, because everything is so symmetrical, at some point, you won't really remember which side is up or down, which Apple says is the point. In case you do hold your iPad horizontally and your hands are covering the sensor, it will give you this warning. If the iPad is upside down and the iPad is too close to your face, it will ask you to look down. And yes, you can still unlock it with a pin. In the week that I've spent with the device, unlock speeds were quick. I just wish that, just like on the iPhone, you didn't have to swipe up each time, which is a bit more cumbersome on a device this size. Also do note that when docked with the keyboard, all you have to do is press on the spacebar for it to unlock. Because it's the same true depth system, that also means you're getting the same portrait lighting features for these kind of effects and depth control, which lets you adjust the amount of background blur after you've taken a shot. The rear camera is similar to that on the iPhone XR, but not the exact same hardware. But it's got some of the new iPhone's nifty tricks, like Smart HDR that lets you shoot against the sun and come up with well-balanced photos like this. I'm not the kind of guy who likes taking photos with a big device like this, but hey, if that's your cup of tea, here are what some sample photos look like. Accompanying its great display are four speakers firing from both its top and bottom, or left and right depending on how you're holding it. Audio is loud and crisp, definitely loud enough for movie night at home in bed. One of the biggest changes to the new iPad, one I didn't see coming, was a switch from lightning to a USB-C port. Apart from the fact that I can now use all my other USB-C chargers, including my MacBook Pros to charge my iPad, you can also connect directly to newer DSLR cameras and import photos directly into your gallery for use on photo editing apps like Adobe Lightroom. When you pop in a USB-C flash drive, it will automatically launch the Photos app as well. However, other file types, everything that's not an image will not show up. So if you're thinking that USB-C was the solution to add files, other kinds of files to your iPad, then you're still out of luck. Maybe, fingers crossed, that comes in a future update. One nifty feature you might find fun is this USB-C port supports reverse charging, meaning you can use your iPad as a power bank to charge your iPhone or any other phone with USB Type-C. But alas, where Apple giveth, it also takes away. Gone in the 2018 iPad Pro is the headphone jack. 
While Apple doesn't make USB-C headphones just yet, I've tried other ones, including my Pixel's USB-C earbuds and those that came with my Huawei Mate 20 Pro, and both worked just fine. Apple is also selling this, a USB-C headphone jack adapter for $9. And I recommend you get the Apple ones because not all USB-C to headphone adapters are built the same. A lot of them are pretty unreliable. Of course, what Apple really wants you to do is to embrace its vision of a wireless future. If you can, I highly recommend plunking down the extra cash for some AirPods. Trust me, I was the biggest holdout because I didn't like the way they looked, but now that I have them and now that I use them, I can't live without them. Apple's built so much power into its new iPad, it's almost crazy. Of course, we try to shy away from the specs discussion here at Gadget Mesh, but for some context, Apple claims it's as powerful as an Xbox One S. In our tests, the iPad Pro powered through graphics-intensive games with ease, be it NBA 2K19, Fortnite, or Asphalt 9. When editing photos on Lightroom CC, it manages real-time application of effects. In our briefing with Apple, we saw it handle a 50 megabyte RAW file from a medium format camera. It also was able to handle a PSB file that's over two gigabytes in size with over a hundred layers on the beta version of Photoshop CC for iOS. This device over here, the Apple Pencil, is for me what really makes the iPad Pro experience complete. With the new iPad Pro comes a new Apple Pencil. It's slightly shorter, has an easier to grip matte rubbery texture, and comes with a flat edge. I'm a big fan and I rely on my pencil a lot for jotting down notes, mind mapping, and just getting ideas out of my head into a form that I can organize. Apple says its goal was to create a well-balanced device that's reminiscent of any other writing instrument. And in this case, I believe they succeeded. And in doing so, they've improved or they've fixed one of my biggest complaints about the original Apple Pencil, charging. While before you had to charge like this, now all you have to do is just snap on the flat edge on the right or top side of your iPad. Apple claims it's the smallest wireless charging solution ever developed. Between the wireless charging mechanism, the magnets that allow it to snap in place to other tech that makes this responsive and precise, that's a lot of tech to squeeze in such a small device. The entire lower third of the pencil can be tapped to enable new functionality. For now, it works on the default Notes app as well as on Procreate. And it's only a matter of time that other app developers will be able to adopt this feature. The upcoming Photoshop, for example, will zoom in and out of an image with the same double tap. By the way, the pencil will also determine if you're tapping or fidgeting. And if you play with your pencil a lot, those won't register as taps. And to answer a question we got a lot of in our hands-on video, this new Apple Pencil will work only with the new iPads. It won't work with the older ones and vice versa. While it does suck that you're forced to pay an additional $130 for a new Apple Pencil, if you're an Apple Pencil user like I am, I think these upgrades are definitely worth it. Inside the new 2018 iPad Pro are several clusters of magnets that ensure the optional smart folio keyboard case snaps on and stays on. This is my first time using this keyboard case and surprisingly, I've adjusted really well. Coming from my Mac, even if the keys are a little bit smaller, I didn't really have to adjust much to the spacing. Clicks felt satisfying, although I would have loved if they were backlit. The folio case is good enough to keep the back and front of the device protected while stored away in your backpack, but it does not offer full protection, so keep that in mind. I use a sturdier, albeit bulkier keyboard case by Logitech on my 2018 iPad. The trade-offs, of course, are size versus amount of protection. In my week with the iPad, I was getting about nine hours of screen on time over a course of two and a half days which is pretty respectable. I use my iPad Pro mostly to watch movies in bed, answer emails, including the entire script for this video. Charging speeds with its bundled 18 watt charger are decent, close to about three hours for a full charge. With an optional 30 watt charger, however, I got to about 90% in two hours. 
So, is the 2018 iPad Pro your gadget match? First of all, let me answer a question that a lot of you have asked. Can this device replace your laptop? The answer is yes, but with conditions. If to you, using a computer means surfing the internet, sending emails, maybe a bit of Word or Excel, and watching videos, then the iPad Pro with the optional folio keyboard is an excellent, more portable laptop replacement. It's a device I'd rather take to a meeting, get some work done at a cafe, or lounge around on the couch with. The only thing that's holding it back is proper file management. You know, being able to put in a flash drive, transfer a file over, or maybe download a file from Gmail and then copy it onto the drive. Of course, Apple's proposition is a completely wireless future. If you can get used to working on the cloud and always have a fast and reliable internet connection on you, this will not be as big of a problem. But to see the iPad Pro as merely a potential laptop replacement is an injustice to the kind of device that it is and the purpose that it serves. I'm going to skip the part about it being a great tablet because while that's a given, there are many other affordable options out there, including the 2018 iPad. This is a pro device, however, and its premium price tag is justified by what it can enable creative professionals to accomplish. If you're a digital artist or an illustrator, then sure, the 2018 iPad Pro is your gadget match. For you, it's a device that can do some things your existing devices cannot, if not do them better. Sure, there may be other tablet PCs also, but none with a display like this, critical to the work that artists do and none with the breadth of apps as iOS. Apps like Procreate, Affinity Designer, Clip Studio, and Astropad, none of which are available on Android. And with a full version of Adobe Photoshop CC for iOS on its way, this device is going to be even more valuable. Apple calls this the iPad that they've been dreaming of making. And in some ways, it too is the iPad that we've been dreaming of owning. And for that, we award it the Gadget Match seal of approval. If you're thinking about getting an iPad for leisure, for the kids, or just for watching Netflix or YouTube, then go ahead and save some money by getting the cheaper 2018 iPad instead. But if you're a creative, even if Apple is keeping last year's 10.5 inch iPad around, there's really no point in getting the older model. Not only will you benefit from a more powerful device, but the new iPad Pro is more future-proof, more flexible, and with an Apple Pencil that's so much better. And that was our 2018 iPad Pro review. For more videos like this one, you know the drill folks, subscribe to our YouTube channel, hit that bell icon so that you get notified first every time we post a new video, follow us on social media for all the fun stuff, and make GadgetMatch.com your daily habit. Until the next video, I'm Michael Josh, thanks for dropping by.